Now the one stern drive that has a little bit of a questionable past is Maybe you've seen it on a boat ad, you know, it's got written down SX drive or Alpha One, and you're thinking, is this a Greek god or is this actually a boat? The two main types of stern drives that you'll see in Australia are either Volvo Penta or Mercury. Now, Volvo Penta actually has a list of different types of stern drives longer than my arm. I'm not gonna list off every single stern drive, but what I am gonna do is I'm gonna list off the top six that I see and which one to avoid. Now, I know straight away there's gonna be plenty of people that'll say, oh, don't buy a stern drive, stern drives are rubbish. That's fine, but we're talking about the people that have to. There's particular boats that don't make shaft drives uh, in certain sizes, and you've gotta have a stern drive. The first stern drive that I see a lot of is the Alpha One. Now, that's the smaller Mercury stern drive. They've got a dog clutch for gear shifting. So what that means is you'll hear a little clunk as it goes into gear. They've got two teeth, and the teeth have to mesh in together. So it's not as smooth when you change gears. They're also fitted with a ignition cut, so the teeth go in easily. This makes for a very clunky sounding gear shift. That's perfectly normal, and these are a smaller stern drive, so they're not rated for really big horsepower. You're not really gonna see them on too many more boats. You'll see them on some little Caribbeans, you'll see them on some Sea Rays. Once you get sort of above 32 foot, you won't see an Alpha drive because they're not designed to hold the power that you need to push a boat that size. The one advantage of an Alpha is if your boat does have it and it's moored, the cost of replacing an Alpha is a lot less than a Bravo stern drive. The second stern drive that you see heaps of is Bravo 2 and Bravo 3. So the Bravo 2 has a single propeller and the Bravo 3 has a duo propeller. What that means is the duo propeller has two propellers that spin independently and they provide more grip to the water. As far as reliability goes, Bravo 2 and 3 are very similar. I'd say the Bravo 2 might be a slight bit more reliable because it's got a little less stress because it's got less grip on the water, but they're both relatively similar, easy to get parts for, and a very common stern drive in Australia. The next one that you might see is a Bravo 1. The Bravo 1, Bravo 2, and Bravo 3 all have cone clutches, so they don't make a clunking sound when they go into gear. The difference with a Bravo 1 is it's a single propeller, and it's also got a front water pickup. These aren't really suitable for boats that live on moorings because you'll get barnacle growth in that front water pickup. They're more of a high performance type leg. I do see them occasionally, but you're just constantly pulling them apart and cleaning out the water galleries so that you don't have an overheat. Alternatively, some people block that off and they'll put in a sea strainer. So the fourth stern drive that I see a lot of is the Volvo SX. Now there's a number of different offshoots, SXM, SXA. They've all got a cone clutch and they're all a relatively decent stern drive. I will say the SX has a very similar mounting position to a Bravo stern drive, where they mount to a face with six bolts. The, the face can become corroded. As long as you keep the water out of them, good set of bellows and universals in good condition, they're a decent stern drive. The next one I see a lot of is the DP, DPM, DPS, same sort of thing. An alloy stern drive with a cone clutch pretty popular as long as you keep the water out of them. All the normal stern drive components updated, they tend to be pretty good. The one thing I will say, Volvo transom assemblies are probably a little bit better than Mercury transom assemblies. I see the Mercury steering pins leak a lot quicker than the Volvo ones. And the Volvo ones are probably easier to repair. Now there's gonna be a lot of people saying, what about the 280 or the 290? Sure, you know, that was a popular stern drive in the 90s, but um, I don't see them quite as much now but they are still a good unit if you've got someone competent working on them. Now the one stern drive that has a little bit of a questionable past is the Volvo XDP. It was a composite drive, so that means it's not an aluminium housing, it's a essentially fiberglass plastic housing. This particular stern drive has a number of complaints online. I'm not gonna say too much about it, but do your Googling and look up the XDP stern drive. The common complaint is that the universal bellows continues to fail and you get water entry in areas where you shouldn't. I'm humbled by the amount of people that have subscribed to the channel, so if you're enjoying the videos, make sure you hit the subscribe and like the video, and I'll keep putting out content.